So family, I'm gonna tell you the story of when my family, the very first time I came out to my family as if I was ever in. <laughs> but I wasn't always this diva that you stand, that's, that you see before you. There was a time growing up here in Washington in the 60s, I grew up through the riots, through the protests, through the sexual revolution, and that's when I was finding myself. <laughs> and as I was finding myself, I found a place where we gathered, because during that time, D.C. was very segregated. The gays gathered one place, and the straight folks gathered another place. And it was a place downtown called Franklin Park where the gays gathered, where I found my home. It was right across the street from a wonderful club called the Brass Rail. And the door lady was Adrienne Blackwell. And if she loved you, you could get in. If not, you had to stand on the curve and wait for your girlfriend to come out. <laughs> so I grew up here in Washington, like I said once before. I had a father who was a cross between G.I. Joe and Rick James. And my mother, was a cross between Mother Teresa and Rosa Parks. I still today don't know how the hell they got together. <laughs> so during that time, my father, because he liked to party and he enjoyed living life to the fullest and he died very young. And he left my mother to raise five, five boys, Robert Raymond, Ronald, Randall, and Russell. All ours, my father liked that word and that letter and he was Robert. So, growing up, without a dad was an experience. I had a father, then one day I didn't. But I had a mother who allowed me to be the best that I could be. And during that time, church was our foundation. Growing up in church was a very, we went on Sundays. From six in the morning to six in the evening. Four services. So baby, Come Saturday night, when I found the Queens, that was my form of rebellion. I would come in at the crack of dawn with the hookers, the church ladies, and just in time to go to church. And during that time, it was a wonderful experience. Church was our foundation. And during that time, it was a place where we found solitude. And it was a place that I looked for, and it, it was a wonderful experience, and it gave me strength, and it gave me hope. And even in church, they allowed me to be the queen that sits before you today. It was a very nurturing space and in a very firming space, but I still wasn't out. So I thought. So before, how many people are over 50 years old in this room? How many people are over 30 years old in this room? So you might remember a time when we had something called a landline. <laughs> Before Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Adam for Adam, and Go Fish. When we had one line in the house and six people had to share it. And during that time, if you were on the other line, your brother or your mother would pick up the other end and tell you to kindly get the fuck off. <laughs> So during that time, I was talking to my good, good, good Judy. You know, you always have good Judys. And my good Judy was named Tommy. And Tommy was a little skinny queen with a very deep voice. So we're talking and I said, oh my God, Tommy, I'm gonna meet you down Franklin Park. And before I knew it, my brother was on the other line and he ran downstairs and he told me, what the fuck are you doing down Franklin Park? The only people that hang down Franklin Park are faggots, hookers and people who use drugs. And in that moment, I said, I sell drugs. <laughs> I sell drugs. I'd rather be a dope dealer or whore opposed to being a homosexual. Because at that time, they were putting us out their house. Families were kicking us out the door and that was my worst fear of being beaten and being turned out by my family. So I refused to come out. So at that moment, when my brother was threatened to call and run upstairs and tell my mother and thank God she was not home. So I called a family meeting. So in that family meeting, I said, 
we have to all gather. So the Chandler clan gathered like we were reading a wheel. And my mother sat and all of my brothers sat in the living room. And I said, Mom, I'm gay. And my mother looked at me and for what seemed like two hours was 20 seconds of silence. And she said, wait a minute, not in my house. She said, get up, let's take a walk. So we walked around the block and my mother grabbed my hand. And I said, mom, what's wrong? She says, well, let me get this in my head. You mean to tell me? And she leaned at me and looked at my face and said, you like men to put their penis in your rectum and you enjoy it? <laughs> now in my mind, I was about to say, bitch. <laughs> but I had realized that was my mother. So I said, mother, it's more than that. It's about love. And it's not about sex. And sometimes you fall in love with someone who happens to be the same gender. And if I find someone who loves me that happens to be male, then I'm going to love him back. So as we walked back, my mother said, if I, are you my son or are you my daughter now? I said, tell him I'm your son and tell him to get over it. So when we went back in the house, my family was gathering, still waiting. So the brother who outed me stood up, called me a motherfucking faggot, said, I hate you, and I'm going to treat you like all those motherfucking faggots in the street. You are dead to me. In my mind, I was going through it. But something said, bitch, ride the storm. Hold, stand still, and if he moves, you knock that motherfucker out. <laughs> then my other brother stood up, and he said, wait a minute. Our whole father's side is all fucked up, so it's got to be in the genes. <laughs> then my little brother, who actually grew up with my children, who stood there and he cried because he was so lost and he didn't know, he didn't know what to think. And I hugged him and I said, I'm your big brother and you will always love me. And then my oldest brother stood up, who was the young minister at the time in the church we grew up. And when he stood up, the room became very silent. And then he said, you know what? Bitch, be the best faggot you can ever be. <laughs> and when he said that, I stood up. And in that moment, <laughs> I said, if the preacher said, be the best faggot I can be, and if God said I can be the best faggot I can be, all of you bitches, get in line. <laughs> Thank you for letting me tell my story. Thank you. God bless.